welcome guys uh, thanks for joining today's uh, episode is based on uh, test your alertness so i'll be showing some very interesting positions some from my game some from uh, different games and uh, yeah and we'll see how is your alertness uh first of all uh, uh, tell me if the video and audio is everything uh, fine yeah thanks soham this is one thing that i try to maintain for sure that is uh, i'll always be on time uh so can you hear me and can you see the position hey vishnu thank you thanks for joining i saw some of your uh, zugzong video vishnu that was quite nice i was seeing when uh, you were showing some bishop pawn end game so uh, this is the first position it could be uh, slightly uh, tricky uh, my question is uh, is it possible to play bishop d3 here Uh, can white play bishop d3 in this position uh, kushal says rook e1 rook e1 bishop d4 yeah okay interesting keep going What happens after rook e1, rook e1, bishop d4? What can white do then? Yeah, but uh, can you continue your variation after rook e1, rook e1, bishop d4? uh no then not it's not pawn up uh, still uh, white has some tricks there mhm mm uh i will make the moves that you are saying so you are saying rook e1 rook e1 bishop d4 what can white do now Wow, oh, Bithan Banerjee. After Bishop d4, Bishop h7, King h7, Queen b1, check c d4. Yeah, that is interesting. So check, take here, King moves and c d4. Uh, but it's equal. Uh, anything better than this? Anything better than Bishop takes h7 here? Okay, rook c1 then. Uh, Sohan, I did not get when you want to play rook d7. Okay, so uh, no, still no correct answer yet. Rook e7, yeah, rook e7 direct is possible, but then he has queen takes c3. Diptayan, bishop d6, c d6, rook e7, that is for sure uh, winning, that bishop d6, uh, c d6 and rook e7 because this pawn is uh, hanging and also this bishop is hanging, but 
what can black play after bishop d6? Black is not obliged to take on d6. Yeah, bishop d6, e d6, rook e7 is winning. This we saw. Yeah, Kushal is right. Queen takes e3. Uh, black will definitely not take c d6 because of rook e7, but black will take queen takes c3. Okay, so so this brings me back to the my question: Was Bishop D three possible or not possible? So I Bishop F two is just King F two. It'll remain peace up. So this game, this particular game, um, happened in Iran. Uh, I was uh, white against a Vietnamese grandmaster, uh, Guen An Dong. And uh, yeah, so I played bishop d3, but he did not take bishop d4. So bishop d3 actually works, but uh, there was a very tricky line. Yeah, Vishnu got it. So basically, uh, takes, takes. It's possible to play bishop b4, but this is not so clear position. There's a very unique trick to play rook e3. It's it's slightly counterintuitive because uh, this is normal. You know you want to pin here, but then there is cd6. But this is a very uh, these are the moves you know like uh, it's very easy to miss in a game. Rook e3. It looks like a very innocent move. The point is after c takes d6, white plays bishop f5, and this rook is kind of tied down to protect his king because there is back rank and kind of fixed with uh, his bishop yeah so we win the uh, we win a piece so yeah my it turned out my opponent also managed to see this so he did not play bishop d4 and uh, game was completely different direction i won at the end but i found this trick quite uh, nice uh, just to sum it up if uh, white yeah, if he attacks, then we can also attack his. Uh, we can also counter attack. So, yeah. So this uh, starting position, uh, this whole trick does not work because of this rook e three move. Uh, next one. Uh, have you guys seen uh, movies uh, like uh, this? Movies on chess. So you know what, the other day I was seeing a movie in Netflix. So it is called The Coldest Game. Actually, uh, let me write it down somewhere here. The Coldest Game. So this was a movie I was seeing in um, Netflix. It is about uh, some US player uh, going into uh, uh, playing a tournament uh, and with some uh, the, it's, it's about the Cold War between Russia and uh, US and also some uh, Cuban stuff. I don't want to reveal, but uh, I don't want to reveal much about the movie. It's, it's an interesting concept. Uh, in the movie, uh, the guy, the hero, who is uh, who is portrayed partly as Fisher and also they have this some uh, Karpov Korchonoi uh, ambience in, in the match. Uh, so there were many positions shown. And this was one of the position. So when I saw in the movie, I was like, wow, wait, I have seen this particular position before. And then I was making some uh, research. And uh, I did not, I knew this, uh, this particular position, but I did not know who played this. So it turned out it was played in 1934 in Madrid, Ortueta versus Sanz. Uh, when in the movie they were showing this particular position, I was uh, quite amazed. Uh, you know, like it brought back this old memories. I don't even remember in which book I saw this position. It's it's quite famous position. It's black to play. So 
So, how do you play here as black? Ah, Vishnu, you know this one. Yeah, it's it's pretty famous actually. Yeah, rook p2 is very uh, standard trick in such positions. But the beauty of the problem is uh, after knight b2, c3. Okay, so the first point is. Uh, Knight d3 does not work because of uh, c4 check and after take we take here and these two pawns are very strong. Uh, the pretty thing is uh, white can move order, yeah, white can play, white can first play rook takes b6. Now what to do? Yeah, Kushal, you're right. Uh, black should not take this because then uh, white will control. So black first takes away this important square. It's a it's a simple problem, but I found it like really pretty. C4, yeah. So if now knight C4, there is C2. But white doesn't give up, yeah. White plays rook B4. What to do now? Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's the only move, Kushal, again. A5. And uh, now it depends uh, how uh, white is going to take on c4. If, if rook c4, then cb2. And if uh, knight c4, then c2. Yeah, I, I found it very pretty. Uh, so when I saw the movie, I thought, okay, I'll show this in my in my stream. It's kind of nice. All right. So next one. Well, this also uh, is quite famous among uh, chess players. Mostly they will know this position. And uh, you know what is the difference? Uh, I have been telling this before also. What is the difference between problem solving and actually playing in a tournament? Like playing in a game, let's say. So when there is a... Uh, when you are solving a problem, you know there is a solution. So you know this position, you know, like quite to play and something. Uh, but in the game, nobody tells. So it's very difficult to understand if... Uh, when was the critical moment. So that's that's how this alertness comes into uh, mind. Yeah, like one has to be constantly alert because you, you never know where when there is combination. This is a famous game. Nigel Short was white and uh, Tim uh, Miles was black. Tony Miles was black. Uh, Nigel played uh, a very sensible move here, which is uh, which is pretty decent. But uh, he had a much stronger move. So uh, my question to you is. Can white play knight b6 in this position? Can white play knight b6 here? Deepali Lokhande, knight b3. Very interesting. But knight b3, what is uh, white's move? Yeah, please, if, uh, if anybody knows the solution, then just don't ruin it. Yes, Mayur, you are right. Uh, Tony Mills is the person who played the... Uh, e4 a6 against Karpov and won. He also had a funny story in some Olympiad uh, 
he had some back pain and he came in stretcher so he was playing uh, you know some of the games lying in a in a stretcher and making moves yeah so knight b3 is not the way because knight b3 there is queen b3 but there is knight e2 knight e2 now the uh, black is threatening check so if rook d7 that's made and for bishop takes e2 there is uh, queen d1 and take and it's made so would you play knight b6 or not No, knight b3, queen b3, queen d1 is not made uh, Pranav because uh, queen b1 there is a uh, queen takes d1. Yeah, Vishnu, it's pretty, right? It's very pretty. Okay, but again, one cannot blame Nigel for missing this because uh, in the game, uh, it's. I think it's very difficult. Very difficult to spot in a game, like when you don't know. Alright, knight b6 is good. Vishnu approves. But what happens for knight b6, knight e2? Come on, let's try to find this. Chandrashis Majumdar got it. He was the first one. It's incredibly beautiful here. White hat queen f8 check. Alright, I'll just pause here so that those who didn't get it, let them digest. Because I, I remember when first time I saw, I was like, what? What is this move? Yeah, I think Vishnu made a very valid point. These are the moves which either you see it or you don't see it. There's just nothing in between. There is no explanation. You know, I was thinking psychologically, uh, it would be easier to, to spot this move if black had a knight on f8. I mean, imagine there was an additional knight on f8 then uh, it would be sort of uh, easy to spot but since there is no one uh, since there is uh, white is not taking any piece on f8 i think it's incredibly pretty so the point is of course uh, i am uh, like if king f8 then it gets with check and only after uh, black moves you know white can always take it and if you take with rook then also knight d7 and now it's threatening this piece and uh, the rook and the knight. So white wins. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a check when you take the black queen. So queen f8 was amazing move. Uh, Nigel in the game, if I remember correctly, played a3, which is, uh, which is, uh, you know, perfectly sensible move. I think any... Uh, most of us would have played a3, you know, once we spot knight b6, knight e2 during a game, uh, you don't see it. Yeah, Vishnu, actually, uh, I, I seriously feel that it would be a lot more easier to spot queen f8 if there was a knight or, you know, rook on f8. Then it would come like, you know, in a, in a second. So, yeah, so this I wanted to show. This queen f8 move. Next one. This is my, f this is also one of my favorite. I don't know if I have uh, shown this to uh, some of our viewers. Question is, can white play castle or not? Should white play castle? Let me put it this way. Then, If you are white, if you are going to play castle, what is the first move that you will consider for black? B4, that's right. That's right. B4, B4 is definitely the move that we will consider. What white will play? Now, let's say once you saw B4, what will be your counter response to that? Because obviously, you want to castle in this position, right? Given a choice. 
Dipta, and you said yes on what context that I have shown you this position. Oh wow, Dipta is very far. H8 queen, interesting. B4, E5. Guys, continue the variation. Uh, we have some very strong grandmasters here. Dipta and Ghosh is one of them. And he said something about H8 queen. Adiban, don't ruin it. Okay, Adiban uh, definitely got it uh, right. It's, uh, but it's, it's, it's nice, right, Adiban? Do you know who played this Adiba? It was played by Ivan Chuk. So uh, the Chinese grandmaster Shu Jun was white. He played castle. B4. This happened in the game. So E5 takes, takes, C B2 takes. And now the Chinese grandmaster was uh, hoping that there will be queen and queen. But Tricky Ivanchuk. Tricky Ivanchuk plays BA1 knight. Yeah, GF. Gitan uh, is saying GF8. Uh, yeah, GF8 and uh, Queen C3 is definitely doable. I mean, you will have some compensation, but you know, just, just exchange down. And also, suddenly I'm thinking maybe. Yeah, no, I'll just take, yeah, and play some something, yeah, rook g8, queen f6. I think I'll play rook g8. Game was pretty interesting. Game was uh, ba1 knight. He played uh, g8, queen. Knight c2, bishop g5, and Ivanchuk again uh, was in his elements. Yeah, here I think white is uh, white is almost lost. Yeah, you know, uh, talking about Ivanchuk, this is my favorite story. I'm I'm pretty sure uh, all the grandmasters are aware of this story, but at the same time, I know most of the uh, people that are watching here they are not aware of the story. So I'll share this. So it happened uh, in uh, during one of the super tournaments, probably Linares or somewhere. So Ivanchuk comes to Anand and says, uh, you know, would you like to play a game, a chess game with me on a, on a race day? And it's a game that I have invented. So Anand is like, yeah, okay, sure, let's play. So what is what is this new game about? So then uh, Ivanchuk says, uh, you know, it's just uh, like chess, but with only one difference. There is the what is the difference? Uh, queen will move like rook and knight, not like rook and bishop, but like rook and knight. So Anand says, "Yeah, okay, fine." And Ivanchuk makes the first move blind. This is happening. Ivanchuk plays first move queen c3 because you know queen moves like rook and knight. So Anand plays uh, knight f6, you know, as an innocent move, and Ivanchuk goes like. Queen takes c7, check, mate. And when Anand told me this story, he was like, Ivanchuk probably invented this game to uh, to mate, to give me a mate in two. The thing is, queen moves like rook and knight in this game, right? So this queen is giving a check here. And this queen cannot take it because queen moves like rook and knight. So, so Ivanchuk mated Anand uh, like this. So you, you guys can uh, try to trick someone by playing this, like this mate in two. All right, moving on to my uh, next position. This is also from uh, Ivanchuk's game, by the way. Ivanchuk is white and Wang Yue is black. So here the question is, um, Evaluate bishop takes g5. What do you think about this move, bishop takes g5? Adivan, you are kidding. There is no way you don't know this story. 
This is like such a famous story. <laughs> so, uh, what do you think about Bishop G5 in this position? Yeah, yeah, uh, this is Ivanchuk White and uh, Wang Yue Black. So, yeah, some, some people told me that um, like after I'm finishing the show or during the show, I should probably uh, give the link of the game. So what I'm thinking is maybe in uh, YouTube comment section later, I'll just give you the link so that, you know, you can, it's easy to search that way. S. Murugan says Bishop G5, Knight D4. Interesting. Bishop G5 was played in the game by Ivan Chuk. Bishop G5, Knight G5, F4. No, King F5 is not possible there. So there's pawn on G4. Alright, Adivan got it. Yes, this is winning for black. Anyone, anyone else found the win? Yeah, uh, there are many other moves like uh, practically any move is fine in this position. But bishop g5 actually loses. This is what happened in the game. Yeah, Bitan also got it right and he gave the solution. So bishop g5, the idea was of course if he takes to play f4. But there is bishop takes d5. It does not matter if white is playing f4 or not. We will anyway transpose to the position. Like uh, if white plays cd5 we will transpose to this position anyway. In the game it was f4, king e4, cd5, takes, takes, h4 check. And this is fascinating because uh, if the king comes here then there is king f4, white takes king into h4 only move and now right now black is two pawns down and uh, he has no interest uh, to, to collect the queenside pawns. He plays king f3. And now slowly, uh, the thing that is going to happen is uh, white, black will force white to to some kind of stalemate. So the game was, uh, let's say, red b4 here. It doesn't matter how black is, uh, how white is responding, and resign because black will constantly uh, keep doing uh, king h2, uh, king g2, and eventually white will have to give all the pawns. So, yeah, and there, there is no way to avoid the statement. If you wait here, he will always, uh, you know, uh, can always wait like this. So this was, this was very, very nasty trick. Classics, who knows classics? Whose game is this? Adivan, any idea? Whose game is this? Let's show your classical knowledge. Uh, my first question is whose game is this? And second is uh, what happens for knight h5 here? Uh, no, Deepal, it's not Bobby Fischer. No, it's not Fisher, no. No, no, my game doesn't come into classics category. 
Uh, okay, so let me give a hint. Okay, I'll give an easiest hint. At the age of 80, this particular person defeated Fabiano Caruana who was uh, 2700. I don't think anybody can ever match this. When he was 80 years old, he defeated uh, he defeated Fabiano Caruana when uh, yeah, Kushal, Korchana it is. Uh, this was played in 1960. Polo Korchana in US or Soviet Championship. Knight h5, uh, the main concern is not knight f7, knight f7 he will take, but knight into b7. Yeah, so what happened after knight b7? So when I was looking at these games, you know, like some of these classics, it's again, it's all about alertness. Nobody told him whether knight h5 is winning or not. Uh, but to able to find the exact mechanism, how it works, it gets very easy when, when it comes as a problem. But during a game, I think it's, it's fascinating how some of these players are, you know, capable of uh, spotting tactics. So knight h5, knight b7. What is going on now? So if you take uh, white's queen, black will take, uh, sorry, if black takes white's queen, uh, white will also take his queen. Yeah, Soumya, Victor the Terrible. So, ah, was 79, not 80, okay. But still, yeah, like imagine at the age of 79, you were defeating uh, Fabiano, how old was Fabiano? I don't even remember. But he was like very young, but and also he was like 2700. Adiban, I can suggest you two very good books. Yeah, one is uh, def you can simply study uh, first of all the predecessors, and I'm reading this uh, very interesting book, uh, My Life and Games by Korchana. Some some stories are incredible. Like even if you read like first five pages of uh, Korchana's childhood, yeah. I mean, I'm going slightly off the topic. So he was born in Leningrad, uh, which is known as St. Peter Petersburg now. And in his childhood, uh, it was uh, at that time, I think uh, Hitler uh, occupied uh, Leningrad. And there was there were a lot of poverty. Basically, he writes that uh, most of his relatives uh, kind of died, but he survived. And at the age of 11 and all, you know, like he was carrying uh, dead bodies in sledge and uh, you know using those uh, like people who would die even they will have some kind of ration card which you could use for a few few days and he had a very troubled childhood so he was using those and uh, it's, it's a fantastic book and it's it's amazing how some of the players you know how they uh, what kind of hardship they went through and Korchona is uh, uh, it's just fascinating yeah, exactly. So, may I write uh, Gibraltar 2012? That's that's what he bet. Anyway, coming back to the game. So, knight h5, knight b7, uh, queen c8. I think this is also very obvious. Uh, like, queen, spotting queen c8 is quite easy because you don't want to play queen d7 because then there is queen d6. And now, if you take on, uh, sorry, if you take on b7, uh, white takes on a6. So, queen c8, that is also uh, easy to spot. And now, both f4 queen and b7 knight, it's uh, attacking. Hey, Tanmay, you know what? Um, you made a very valid point. That's it. I, I also feel this. So when I was studying Korchana's game, I saw he's like extremely fighting. And uh, he had tremendous good score with uh, both uh, Tal and Petrosian. And he was never scared of, you know, uh, attacking. He was master of uh, counter-attack and also defending. I think... Uh, to some extent, it is uh, uh, it is because of his uh, you know upbringing and everything. Like he he is he was fighting from uh, literally from you know like from his childhood. So yeah, queen c8, queen d6, and this is the move I felt it's very difficult to to foresee in advance. Like okay, the knight is attacked, you play knight b8. This is still possible, but to understand that 
once you play such a move it's uh, the material is equal suddenly uh, this knight is attacked and there is a very devilish threat bishop f8 and this queen is trapped out of nowhere it's like literally out of nowhere this queen is trapped so so i thought like this was this was very very pretty Uh, somebody said knight d6 at what point? Are ah, you mean queen c8 knight d6? Yeah, but then I just uh, attack uh, somewhere. Yeah, like I play maybe yeah maybe something like queen b8. Let's say yeah maybe queen b8, and you cannot protect this. So I thought this knight b8 and spotting that uh, you know there is bishop f8. It's it's very nice. The game went like bishop b5. I'm just thinking how he played bishop b5 because why not this now? Caution I did not play this. Ah, because now it's still not threatened, yeah? Wow, suddenly I'm see why why he had to take here first? Ah, it's probably bishop e8. Maybe for some reason he wanted to avoid this. I don't yeah, he simply he simply found a better way. He just uh, took on e3, take, and then played bishop f8. I think it's just uh, it's just a better way. And queen takes b7. Yeah, queen d8, queen b7, and he won the game. So this was um, another example I wanted to show. Ah, okay. This is not a classic. Uh, this game was not meant to come immediately, but I think. Uh, I missed one game. Hang on. I think I missed one game. Yeah. Uh, this one. White to play. Also another classic. Yeah, Vaivav is fast. Vaivav, uh, ah, rookie for rookie for Fisher. Yeah, this ah, that's why you guys were saying Fisher. Maybe uh, when I uh, change the position, this position came first. Yeah. So again, uh, this particular game, uh, it was played in 1970. Uh, I, I'm again, I'm thinking like how, you know, he found this over the board because he was planning this long back. It was not that this position came and then he figured it out so this is also very nice uh, and the queen gets trapped in the middle of the board okay rookie for queen g3 was forced because d4 there is bishop f4 so queen takes g3 and rook d4 and this queen does not have a square in the middle of the board like okay he played uh, queen g4 and fisher slowly uh, won this game Uh, yeah, I think I was seeing this game. That's how I, this queen trap came into my mind, and then I got to this game. This is not a classic, guys. This could have uh, happened in one of my game against uh, Ramesh. This is from 2003. Uh, I actually did not see this. I, from from a distance, I was uh, looking at this position, and I could not find a win for for black. So I I. I avoided this particular variation and later when I came back to my hotel room and checked with computer, computer said, uh, you know, black is completely winning here. There was one particular reason uh, that I missed uh, during my calculation as black. Yeah, Indian classic. And once I checked with computer, I was like, what? This was possible? So, 
So what are the moves uh, you would consider here as uh, black? Oh, yeah, sorry, I'm not mentioning, yeah? So it's black to play, it's black to play. Uh, tell me, is it better if I if I do it this way, like flip the board? Maybe that way it is better, yeah. Yeah, Shyan, I got I got your point. Thanks. I'll mention it from from next positions. Arvind, Namaste. Good to see you. Atiban, you remember this? This is two thousand three, man. Yeah, Queen G5 check. Uh, Queen G5 check. Then there is there is King F1. Yeah, Rook E1, Queen G5. So keep going. Rook E1 check. King G2. Queen G5 check. King H3. Rook G1. Yeah, Bitan, you are missing something for uh, white side. Ilamparthi, you are also missing something from uh, white side. After Rook G1, there is a defense from uh, white side. Ativan says, <laughs> I remember saying F6 on the last move. No, Arvind. Ah. So, what happens after Rook E1 check, King G2, Queen G5 check, King H3, Rook G1, Divya Deshmukh, wow, Rook B6, they are missing Rook B6. So Divya, will you play uh, Rook E1 or not? Yeah, I might have showed because this is one of the position that, you know, like very often it happens that we, we play a game, we come back to our hotel room. And we start uh, checking with computer and then we are absolutely sure, no, this did not work. And then computer says something and then we are like, what? It takes time to digest. So this was one of the move. Uh, actually, I was calculating this from five moves before this position. So like this will be the fifth move. And then I came here, I saw till rook g1, rook b6 and I left. So it would be like already eighth or ninth move. Then comes f6. So let's see. Rook e1 check here. Queen g5 check here. Here. Rook takes b6. And f6. But f6 there is rook b8 check. Start with knight c4. Yes. But uh, maybe he will simply stop uh, rook e1 check. Tanmay. Uh, Prasanna Rao, is that real Prasanna Rao? G6 does not work Prasanna Rao. Somebody confirm if that is real Prasanna Rao? Divya is saying yes and no. Nobody has any idea what it is, what, why, why she is saying yes and why she is no. She is saying no. Knight b7. Somia says knight b7. Come on, Somia, come up with something better. Knight b7 doesn't threaten anything immediately. Okay. Yeah, somebody got the right answer. So check here. 
So I left after rook b6 and this was as I said this was like 8th or 9th move but computer showed that white black can play knight c6. And this was amazing like uh, first of all this is controlled secondly queen h6 is threatened now which means black white can either take queen c6 or rook c6 so if queen c6 then there is queen f5 check and uh, g5 check so that's mate i mean yeah just let's make the move so this is mate and once rook c6 only now, uh, who said g6? I think Setu or someone. Only now g6 works because then this rook b8 check and knight d6 is missing. So there is nothing white can do to stop uh, queen h6. And I know this was only, uh, yeah, knight c6, rook c6, and g6. And so, may I, I know uh, knight b7 is not winning. I have to just figure out why it is not winning. But why king h5, king g7? King h5, you can play gf4 check and it's mate. So let's see, knight b7. Knight b7, there, there are no threats. So I'm just thinking maybe something like, maybe something like bishop d7. It kind of, it kind of goes on, yeah, like. We don't know where it is leading. Yeah, rook a6 also did that. Yeah, knight b7 there is also, maybe there is rook a6 also. So knight c6 is the move. That's that's how it was. Knight c6, rook c6 and now g6. Very computerized. But um, beautiful. So moving on to next position. This is white to play. Uh, this was played in uh, Belgrade. Wait, what, Vishnu, what I cannot fix? What should I fix? Somia's talent. All right, so this was played in Belgrade. I was white and uh, Hari, Hari Krishna who is uh, coming tomorrow in my show, he was black. And yeah, many people will know this because Hari actually tweeted I think. Uh, once again this was missed in Blitz. No, this cannot be King's Gambit, there is no way this is King's Gambit Setu, my pawn is on F2. I, I actually don't even remember what kind of opening is this, how my pawns got you know how I lost my rook and everything but yeah it was some kind of wild opening I kept on sacrificing pieces Hari kept on taking and then uh, then we came to this particular position and it was white to play well guys no, no one could have seen this game unless they're uh, you know they saw it in my or uh, Hari's twitter because this was just a blitz game. It, it never it never got published. Yeah, bishop g5. Queen g7. Somebody is saying queen g7. Queen g7, I'll take it, no? There will be no mate. This is too vague, I think. There will be some defense. Even king g8, I don't see it. How it is mate immediately. Because this knight will eventually come here. Yeah, that's also right. Yeah, exactly. Why not king d7? So I wanted to play bishop g5. Yeah, but bishop g5 there is rook g8. Vishnu wish I had a rook on h1. Mayur is thinking knight g7. I think knight g7 is what exactly what I played in the game. I don't remember what happened here. Ah, he played bishop h3 check. 
I don't remember the game actually. I don't, I don't even have the game. But there was no mate. Like I took on it. Ah, and then King D7. Yeah, I think something like this happened in the game. And then black kind of escaped. Yeah, Adivan found it. Yeah, now Michel Catherine also found it. Yeah. So Bishop G5. I left it after Rook G8. Okay, it's a blitz game. And then computer is like, boom, Bishop E7. Such a pretty, such a pretty variation. Uh, I I will jump a little for just uh, you know when you said Queen G7. Many many players know this, but still I would like to. I would like to show this particular position. Hang on, just for those who are not aware of this uh, particular game. Mm. Yeah. Okay, mostly I've Anderson game. Yeah, yeah. Viva, yeah, Anderson game. And also, you remembered Anderson game. I remember this one. This is uh, Ivanchuk Shirov. So there was there was a phase in my uh, in my career when I was working with Shirov. This is uh, 2006 and 2007. And at some point, I remember we were talk discussing about this game. And uh, Shirov told me that Ivanchuk actually came up uh, about this idea on the board. So this was not some kind of home preparation. This was nothing to do with computer. He he came up uh, it uh, on the board. It's it's a very famous thing, but I think many people underestimate, uh, you know, the power of uh, human imagination. Uh, we think uh, like more, many of us are, you know, we grew up with computer engines and everything. But uh, back in those days, uh, so many brilliant ideas uh, were found, uh, you know on the board and uh, even in preparation it was like a lot of imagination yeah it was queen g7 yeah uh, actually i'm going a little bit off the topic but i can't help to let me find one more game it's just like i'm randomly i'm remembering another queen sack of Ivanchuk. although i don't think uh, this was uh, Ivanchuk's idea but let me see yeah. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't think it was. Uh, this is Ivanchuk side. Oh, wow. Uh, actually, Adivan, uh, sorry, Setu said uh, exactly this is what I also remembered. So, I, I think uh, most of the players, like, uh, you know, uh, Grandmasters, let's say, they have this kind of, uh, this kind of habit. Yeah, you, you suddenly remember something. Like just the way uh, Setu remembered uh, after this Queen's activist, he remembered the exact game that which I was, uh, uh, which also came to my mind. Uh, this was played in, uh, this was played in some uh, Umber Rapid tournament. And but I don't, I can actually check if this was Ivanchuk's idea. I remember I checked it long back, and this was not Ivanchuk's idea. It was played before. Yeah, I see Lobron Novikov in 99. Yeah, so definitely not Ivanchuk's idea. But, oh no, wait. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, my bad. Oh, maybe it's right. Maybe it was Ivanchuk who came up with this. Maybe I knew it all wrong. I mean, it was Ivanchuk for the first time. Wow, I, I, I somehow felt that this was played uh, before. Yeah, it's Ivanchuk Karyakin, Queen takes e6. It's like some of Ivanchuk's ideas are so cool. Maybe someday I should make an episode just on Ivanchuk. That will be very interesting. Like, who plays like this, yeah? Giving a queen for... So, may are you making this up or uh, you really uh, know this? But with Ivanchuk, it's it's very much possible. It's very much possible. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. 
Yeah, and then he won the game. So this was brilliant. Wait a second. Can I... Uh, hey, would you mind if I show one uh, clippings? It's a very funny clippings. I am just trying to search since we are talking about event joke. Let me, let me get this. Let me get this one. This will be fun. Uh, I am pretty sure most of the chess players are already aware what uh, YouTube clippings is coming since it is event joke. But uh, just for those who are who are not uh, who have not seen this, let's see. Uh, is it visible properly? Maybe I'll create. Uh, Run the screen. Yeah, event of playing checkers. Uh, yeah, that's the one. Wait a second. Let's do it this way. Uh, I am not a big expert on this, so just uh, give me a little time. Is this fine? I will then play the video. Alright, I think. Yeah. Okay, I will mute the sound. Sound is anyway not so important here. So let's see. So they are playing checkers. Okay. Uh, let me. Uh, uh, do you know, guys? Uh, do you know the this checkers rule? Yeah, this is very funny. Yeah, where he is actually thinking about. Uh, particular position now he is thinking about this uh, chess party I have to adjust the screen yeah now 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 it came ah, I missed it sorry Yeah, so here I want to pause. Uh, it, you guys have any idea how checkers uh, are moving? So ju just in case, I, I believe uh, most of you know how, how checkers, uh, what are the checker rules. So pawns are moving uh, diagonally, one square but diagonally, okay? So like uh, all these pawns can move only on black squares and it does not move like a like a bishop, like not uh, two squares or something, it, it can just move one square diagonally. Now, so this was the particular position which you see on the board and even took thought about some particular combination. So how do you win in a game in checkers when you capture all uh, black pieces, right? And uh, you move diagonally, you capture a pawn when you jump, like uh, there, is a, there is a pawn uh, in front of you like diagonally and you jump and take it. And the rule is, uh, if there is a capture, you have to take. You cannot say, I don't, I cannot, I don't want to take. That is not an option. So look at this Ivanchuk's combination here. So this is playing with Jobava. We see Nepominiachi. There is Maplakov there. I am also standing somewhere. Yeah, that's a green shirt. That's me. And now Ivanchuk comes up with this uh, interesting idea. Yeah, he plays this. So, at this point, uh, now white is obliged to play pawn a3 to c5. You have to take it. There is just nothing. You cannot say I will not take it. So, this is for sacrifice. So, he takes. And now, Ivanchuk plays e7, f6, second sacrifice. And now, everybody realizes. So, when black will take, uh, sorry, when now white is obliged to play g5 to e7, 
and then comes the combination then black plays f8 to d6 takes the e7 pawn d6 to b4 takes the c5 pawn d4 to d2 take the c3 pawn and queens so it was it was brilliant but there was one thing that i i was not aware so i have played checkers in my mobile and uh, i knew that uh, once you queen the pawn the advantage of promoting queen or dama or what what they call is that uh, you can now also move backwards but in my mobile it was like you can only move backwards so i saw this combination like uh, you know white takes on takes the pawn on f6 and then uh, black takes three of white's pawn gets to d2 but then white plays pawn h2 to g3 black queens white plays g3 to h4 and then white is also queening because uh, black queen cannot uh, chase uh, the white pawn but i did not know that there are different uh, version of uh, this checkers the one that i played after queening you can only move backwards one square but they were playing in some rule where queen can move all the way like a bishop so there will be a moment here when i i'm actually asking this here and then i i tried to show like why it is not uh, winning like why it is not a draw here he plays queen d2 and i thought yeah he cannot catch but then it turned out uh, this particular rule you know it's possible to catch like this yeah even chuk is very funny guys is 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 a brilliant is brilliant player all right back to our back to back to chess back to chess is it draws no it's it's checkers i think it's checkers i don't know i wish if the if the tanshu is online if he is watching maybe he'll be able to say he is my board games guru wait i didn't want this position we have seen this this we have seen yeah this one uh hang on all right no eventuk i don't think i will get him it will be very difficult i'd love to have eventuk on my show someday but i'm not sure if i if i'll be able to get him Okay. Ah, uh, maybe drops and checkers the same. It's possible. Uh, yeah, this is white to play. Uh, there is no, there is no direct combination. There is no, um, no. Uh, not a single solution also not it's not even like uh, the move that i played is uh, the strongest it's it's my game against lake wang liem from asian team championship by zack so uh, here is my question you know sometimes it's good to good to go with the flow that you know like the first move that uh, that comes into into your mind that that's like the intuition So tell me what is the first move? I don't want any variation. What is the first move that you will say in this, in this particular position? Like what is what is instinct? What what comes naturally in this position? Or let's say top two moves. H four. Okay. So oh, thanks, Omia, for uh, clarifying. Checkers and draws are same. I actually have to at some point understand like why they had this different rules. Yeah, knight knight f3 or uh, h4. Th th these are the moves. But knight f5 I did not like because he can also take uh, bishop f5. Adivan, just shut up. Yeah, you are you, you are the last person to play rook d3 here. This I think entire audience like who, who knows your game will agree. And it, there is there is no way Adivan you are seeing rook d3 first. Oh my God! I mean, somebody here, like Setu Zarwan, and say something. Yeah, Adiban is saying his first move uh, instant is Rook D3, and I have to buy this. Yeah. All right, guys, let's try H4. Rook D3 is probably the strongest move. H4, Rook F C8. What is the first move you will see? 
Yeah, at least I got one supporter. Like in a game, he will never play such moves. And uh, Adivan, if Rook, if moves like Rook D3 or Knight E2 comes to your uh, mind, at least keep playing those moves in team championship. No, in team championship you are never doing that. Oh, lockdown changed him. Okay. So H4, Rook F C8. What is the first move that comes in in mind? H4, obviously black will play rook fc8. What comes in mind? Yeah, rook d3 is very standard. Yeah, h5 is very natural. I mean, Pro objectically, I think rook d3 was better, but uh, also this is 2008, I was much more aggressive, so h5, rook c3, and h into g6. So both me and Lekwang, uh, we saw this, and uh, let me say, uh, let me show the obvious trick here. The first obvious trick is... Uh, if f into g6, this does not work because of g5. And the main motto is to play knight h5 takes, takes, g6. And this is mate. But as I was calculating, uh, I suddenly saw black can play bishop e8. It's an interesting mechanism, uh, defense mechanism to protect like this. And uh, yeah, and how to play here? Uh, I have got all these Karpovs here, yeah, like Knight, Arvind is saying uh, Knight B1, Adiban is saying Rook D3. Uh, Nihilesh, first, uh, for Knight F5 in the first move, uh, Black will just take bishop f5, black will keep the pawn on g6 and then g5 uh, does not come into picture. Uh, like, uh, yeah, he'll take bishop f5 and then g5 is not getting open. Arvind, I thought your any position, your, the first move that comes in your mind is rook g1. Yeah, bishop e8, knight e6, threatening queen g7 and then there is king f7. But this was this was rather easy because uh, rook takes d6 and the b7 queen is hanging. Yeah. So this was winning. It turned out. Um, all right. Here is a question. So white is threatening g5. Ah, yeah, deep, deep, that is also winning, by the way. Knight e6, uh, king f7, uh, instead of rook d6, I think this is also winning. Knight d8, check, takes, and king takes c3. Uh, this is also winning. But this is not the problem. Uh, the question is, once uh, I played hg6, would you play uh, queen c7 or queen b4? Uh, Somya, h5, you are saying what? g5. Yeah, h5, g5 you can play, but then even if I play rook d3, then I got a bet much better version also, right? I have all sorts of threats in hand. And having said that, I'm just curious if I can play knight f5 or not. Probably not. Yeah, probably not. So... Yeah, hg6 white threat is uh, g5. White has one simple threat, g5. And now this was very interesting moment, whether to play queen c7 or to play queen b4, because black must create something. It's clear that black cannot take fg6. There is no way to stop g5. 
so which essentially means that you have to take on uh, like you have to add, create some counter on uh, queen side in the game uh, it's kind of interesting that both me and le kuang both of us thought uh, queen before exactly i think that's the psychology on my active defense queen before this this was the this is the move that is uh, that comes intuitively to mind right and now rook c2 is threatened so there are two ways to play rook h2 or to play rook d2 now rook h2 what do you think is the obvious disadvantage of rook h2 like when you calculate rook h2 this comes in mind oh this could be you know like uh, yeah for those who did not understand just queen the purpose of queen d4 like if you play g5 then there is uh, sorry not this rook takes c2 check takes queen c3 and yeah some kind of perpetual at least so rook d2 or rook h2 if i start with rook h2 what is the disadvantage of rook h2 Yeah, yeah, Divya and uh, Dipta and both are right. Exactly. That means after Fg6, G5, Knight H5, this rook is kind of doing multitasking, and uh, this will not work. So when you take Rook H5, then eventually Rook C2 will happen. So that means then Rook D2. What is the disadvantage of uh, Rook D2? Uh, I did not understand what should I do. Close the square highlight move. I don't know what you are saying actually. So, rook d2. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Deep rook c2, but on right moment. So after f g6 g5, now there is rook takes c2 because suddenly this rook is hanging. D two is hanging. So if knight c two, there is queen takes d two, and if rook takes c two, there is queen takes d four. Now the thing is, uh, when I played h four, exactly, uh, they found the solution. But this something that I had to spot from here on move twenty one, rook f c eight, h five, takes, takes, queen b four. The only move that wins in this position is king b1. It's actually fascinating, like you know, with so many pieces hanging, the only move that wins is king b1. Because you just get away from this rook takes c2 threat, and still you have all the threats on your own. Uh, this was the only way to win, and uh, yeah, there is nothing black can do for. For uh, G five. Actually, suddenly I'm curious. Any of uh, any of my colleagues played in uh, Asian team Vizac two thousand eight? Adiban, you were there by any chance? I don't remember. I know Abhijit Gupta was there. Sashi was in the team. Forgot. Forgot what was our team. So yeah, uh, the game. Yeah, and then subsequent I played. I think I played Queen B two, and it was a long game, but I won. And uh, yeah, so the thing that both of us underestimated was uh, Queen C seven kind of draws. I'm actually certainly very curious what uh, the engines will say in this particular position. I'll just turn it on. It says Queen C seven only move, but still it it is better. Rook d2, f g6, g5. Yeah, it's a bit computerized, and then you take rook b3. Oh my god, this is very deep. So it says like, yeah, game kind of goes on like this.
Yeah, so Asomia played in uh, Vizek. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, I think that's uh, that's all I wanted to show today. Mm. Yeah, I can kind of keep going, but uh, probably ideal time to stop now. A uh, few things. Uh, one is uh, tomorrow. Hari will be joining at six o'clock. This is going to be an epic episode uh, with Hari. I mean, I know him uh, literally since he started playing chess and. I have actually lost count how many tournaments uh, you know uh, I played uh, I played with him and uh, also how many tournaments I I was working uh, I was helping him as second this will, oh gosh too soon too soon all right fine so my next stream you know like uh, my next solo stream I wanted to uh, show show something uh, of your uh, of your choice okay let's see what chat is saying chat is saying Harvin, can you do a separate show on ad's masterpiece actually i'm thinking uh, i should probably show some of uh, adiban's game yeah? especially adiban versus uh, kostenko all right let, let, let's do a very quick thing today give me a topic right now i, I anything and we can wrap it with that. Mayur, I know the rules of Shogi. I know Sashi. Sashi Kiran is a very, uh, very decent uh, Shogi player. I have not. I have played Shogi, but not much. I know Xiangi also. That is Chinese chess. And in my in my house, I have both uh, Shogi and Xiangi, but I don't have a player. So maybe if someday you will come, we can play. All right, so topic, guys. Adiban Stefanova, no, come on. Winning loss position, position and play. All right, okay. Uh, fine. I will show. Let's the kid learn. All right, this there, there will be a completely uh, separate. Uh, segment on Adiban's play uh, that we will do. Let me show uh, some of my, let me bring back some of my childhood memories. So, um, how to do this? Okay, I'll, I will do this just out of memory, forget it. So, uh, let me see. Okay. Um, So, many uh, in my childhood, I saw I was very fascinated with uh, combinations and uh, uh, miniature games. One of the games that uh, stayed in my mind was this. I don't know who played this, so you guys have to tell me if you know whose game it is. Okay, so anybody has seen this game? Show without GMs in chat. <laughs> right. Actually, maybe somebody can find this game. Or maybe actually I can find this game. Wait. Vishnu, you don't know this game. This game created a very interesting, uh, like very nice impression. Uh, you know, in my childhood, I was fascinated of such things. So, yeah, I think from here it starts. Takes, takes, bishop, c. Actually, I can find whose game it is. Schlechter. This is the game, 1893. Flasic Schlechter. All right. Let's see. Queen takes g7. No, Argadip, I'm definitely not going to show that. And you know that very well. Bishop f2 check. 
कीजिए d4 so white cannot take knight e4 because queen e1 checkmate let queen h8 check king e7 and now queen takes c8 yeah, I, don't, I don't know what uh, like there are there are some games which uh, which kind of all forever remain with me d takes c3 bishop c1 yeah, and I, I enjoyed this this particular finish in this game so it takes queen takes b5 so it's threatening uh, checkmate is bishop f4 and then what happened was spectacular the knight d7 queen takes a8 is forced queen d5 check king c1 and still it's not obvious how it is made and then goes bishop e3 check he has to take knight f2 threatening queen d1 mate Nice, no? I found it very pretty. All right, I don't even know if there was any connection of uh, today's topic or anything. But uh, yeah, it just uh, this this particular game just uh, in my childhood I, I I loved it absolutely. Uh, although again, I mean, I never checked with computer. I don't want to check it now also like I don't want to see that how many ways black was winning or whatever I don't want to spoil it I I want to keep uh, keep this exact impression how it is so yeah so uh, so my next stream I'm uh, this is what I'm planning uh, what is it white plate only with the queen and black has only one queen left yeah yeah true true this is uh, this is very pretty. Yeah, so I was thinking uh, next Friday when I will do another solo, uh, or maybe I'll do it on chess day. Yeah, maybe I'll do it on. Ah no, yeah, I'll do it on next Friday, seventeenth July. I'll do next solo show, and uh, yeah, that I will do uh, depending on your topics. Yeah, like you. Uh, give me uh, give me a topic and I'll I, I will show some material on that how to improve on calculation yeah there are there are different methods I personally tried something which worked for me uh, but one thing I want uh, want to be very clear on that uh, that everybody has their own own method yeah so what worked for me not necessarily will work for someone else i can tell what worked for me you guys can try so i think everybody has their uh, their their limit of calculating calculation power right somebody is capable of uh, seeing let's say four moves five moves uh, from a particular position uh, somebody is capable of uh, you know thinking uh, let's say 10 moves 15 moves so at some point, uh, I also realized that I had, let's say, I was seeing, let's say, you know, like six, seven moves, and then I was evaluating the position. So then I made a point that uh, wherever I would start evaluating, I will just go one or two moves further and uh, just push myself. And this I was doing in training and also in tournaments. Uh, it can it can backfire also because you are sort of, you know, at some point you are overthinking. So it's better to do it in a training games and do it in training positions. Uh, you know, not when you are solving position, don't don't move pieces. Just keep on thinking blind, and that way the imagination is better. The clarity uh, is much better, and and that's how I improved. Like that's how I slowly my calculation kind of improved. And I think one of the big problem in uh, calculation is also comparison. That's also very tricky. Like, uh, let's say I'm calculating some lines, let's say 8-10 moves here, another branch, some 8-10 moves there. And then, then you have to compare, you have to understand, you know, which way to go for and so on. So, so yeah, 
solving positions, training blind, clarity. I think I think that's what is important. Like when you are solving particular positions, uh, there should be clarity. Like both should be visible very clearly. I think that's how that's how calculator uh, that's that's how calculation improves. Yeah. So uh, tomorrow's show uh, will be with uh, Hari. It, I am pretty sure it will not be uh, very rush one. Like he will take it. Uh, he also he's also very chilled out uh, guy. And I am I am very thrilled and very uh, eagerly I am eagerly looking forward to this interview. I mean with Hari again like we have uh, so many experience and so many tournaments. Uh, we played together that one interview is simply not enough now um, there will be two episodes the second episode will be his, with his uh, wife nadesna i am not very sure how many questions i'll be able to take this time like there are only two shows and uh, one with uh, nadja and one with uh, hari but we'll see how it goes yeah i have prepared something i hope uh, it will be uh, interesting and we'll definitely see some some of uh, Hari's games. Uh, what time it is? Yeah, hang on. I'll uh, I'll check at what time it is uh, starting. Uh, yeah, it will be at six p.m. tomorrow. I'll I'll anyway schedule and uh, put it uh, in all my uh, social media and everywhere. So six o'clock tomorrow, and day after tomorrow also six o'clock. So all right, guys. Thanks a lot for. Uh, joining and uh, see you tomorrow bye bye and i'll quickly see the chat if anything else i missed no all fine all right take care bye